What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at South by Southwest 2024. I'm lucky enough to be sitting with the team behind Switch Up. Congratulations on your movie. Congratulations on being part of South by Southwest. Thank, Thank you. you. What an uh, honor. Yeah. We love the energy. Thank you have this yeah. energy all day. Literally all day. There's a <laughs> Starbucks right down yeah. the way there. Very convenient. It's in my veins big time. Uh, Krishna, I'm going to give you the hardest question of the bunch here because clearly I know what your movie is. A lot of our viewers will not just yet. So can you give a brief synopsis of Switch Up? A uh, brief synopsis. Wow. It's, uh, um, let's say it's, this is the story of uh, this guy, Ricardo, that supposedly he had everything in his life. And then uh, there's something that switches completely his life to really understand true love and true meaning behind happiness and life. Because he loses day. everything he yes. has. That, that supposedly, that, yeah, that, that made him that happy. He, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, yeah. material, power, fame, money, everything that he gave a lot of power to mm -hmm. in order to be happy, then he uh, loses everything. And then he, through that, he finds the truth in himself and then he finds love and true happiness. And the meaning of life. Yes. Wow, that's, <laughs> I know that, I know that in a comedy. <laughs> all, all very accurate, good description right there. You missed a very key point though. This movie is filled with good dogs. Yes. Uh, yes. I will always be won over by good dogs in a movie. <laughs> and they are on the credits of the movie that I yeah. love. They should and be. All, all, the, all the dogs with yeah. the credits. And most beautiful. of them belong to our director. Yeah, she rescued Seriously. them. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Makes me Tara, like Tara even more now. She's changing yeah. the world. Yeah, she's changing the world with the dogs and with us. One dog at a time. One, one dog, dog at a time. time. One movie at a time. One, one dog, dog at a time. time. Yeah. Christian, now she has like four. Another question for you about Tara, and it might be maybe the answer is because she's a dog person, but I know you worked together before. So, what was it about her that made you think to yourself, "This isn't just someone I want to work with once, but I want to have a long-lasting collaboration we, with"? We 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 became friends on the set of another movie where she was uh, uh, a producer producer, not the director, and I was uh, the actor there. And then we, it was a drama, v very dramatic, and, and then we started having fun. And then we started, me and we had the same sense of humor, and then said, well, one day we should do a comedy. And then she said, oh, well, I'll, I'll direct it. And they said, well, and I'll act it and produce it. And then, okay, let's do it. And then became Switch. Very good so there. Yeah. So you you emphasize you emphasize comedy there. And whenever I watch a, I mean, whenever I watch any performance, I feel like there always needs to be a sense of fearlessness to it. But in particular, when you're doing comedy, so for all of you, can you recall a time, whether it was on this movie or another set, when you saw a co-star be fearless and it inspired you to take risks with your own work? Oh my God! I think we were, we're, we're like all of us were fearless in some way in this movie in particular. I, I think you have to be, you know, like it's like you're taking risks all the time, and you need a partner to do that because it's the only way for you to feel safe in some way. Uh, and I feel so safe with these people. I mean, we didn't have any scenes in this movie. Spoiler alert! Uh, <laughs> but uh, together, I mean, but it's it was just wonderful having such a great team, like supporting you. And since we're such a huge cast, I, I can like truly say that every single person brought it up, every single person. So that's when you work with, I don't know, with like amazing people and that's amazing. Like it's just like, just the fact that you're working with people that are like protecting you or like making you feel safe is just, I mean, it doesn't get better than and that. And adding to that a little bit about feeling safe and, and what she was saying, I was able, I should have paid to do this movie. Because I really had a master class. Still have time. What you want to yeah, do that? I, I, That's yeah, true. I had a master class from that gentleman over there. You know, that was every day doing scenes with him. It was really, really a master class where, where I felt that I could go places that I've never been before because he was there yeah. to protect me. A couple of scenes that we did that um, I looked at them uh, later. I'm like, wow, I did that. I was like, yeah, because of him. So, so mm -hmm. Jeff, thank you again and again. Thank I'm you. always going to be thankful. Do you have anything you want to add? A time when you saw a co-star on this movie be fearless with their work? I actually don't deal in that world of fear. I mean, I think, um, I sense. think, um, I mean, it, I appreciate the question, but I don't know how to answer that uh, because I think, um, I think too many times with, with this movie in particular, it deals with, but too many times in life we, work or we're with people that work from a place of fear and um and it's not 
their fault. Mm -hmm. It's that they're victims of other people's judgment. Mm -hmm. And so the fear can only come from judgment from others. And if we don't feel that we're being judged, or at least we're in a place of comfort, um, that jazz fear just doesn't come in. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry I can't answer that no, question, but uh, I could create an answer. <laughs> but uh, the answer is that uh, you just, I think we move forward without the feeling of judgment. And um, that's the whole creative process. That's the beauty of filmmaking and stage plays and music and art is uh, expression without fear. And I don't mean from a place of courage, okay. but rather from a place that others don't have the right to judge. It's, I like that it's all expression. Yeah. You see what I was saying? I concur. Every day that I figured yeah. this was going to be the case before you even walked in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually concur with him because um, you come to this to the space to play, and in play, it's vulnerability. So you really there. I mean, when you're outside playing as kids, right? This is what we do: play, pretend in this vulnerable space. There really isn't any place for fear. You're out there, you're fearless yeah. more than anything. So uh, I did work with people that I felt were fearless. And uh, improvisation is something that I really thrive in, love a whole lot. We loved, yeah, and we did that fearlessly. Yeah. So uh, we had fun and we just played. And I think people appreciate what we offer to the screen and to all of you with a message behind it. I'll ask you specifically about getting the opportunity to play with Temple because I'll never forget one of my first South Bys <laughs> is when I met him. And really? now every single time I come back, we bump into each other. And wow. I don't know, we just remember that first interview. So what was it like going toe to toe with him in a bunch of scenes? Well, I think you should ask him what was it like going toe to toe with me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that phrase. Right? <laughs> um, again, we were just, it was vulnerability. I welcome anyone who is brave to step into the play yard to actually play and just surrender to that. And he was one of those, so it was delicious. Like we just had fun on top of fun on top of fun. And uh, I, I didn't know him before, so um, it was, I, I, and even last night when I saw him, I'm like, oh my God, we have to do something else again, like right away. Just because most people can't go back and forth. That banter or that, yeah, it's, it's definitely, you have to be present in the moment. Mm -hmm on your, like not really on your toes, but just present and listening. Mm -hmm. The one thing about story is listening, right? So when you say something, I say something, you say something, it's like a dance. We go yeah. back and forth. And so he was wonderful to do that dance with, and we did a dance. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. I have kind of jumped ahead. We didn't really get to highlight your individual characters, and I don't want to sit here and be like, who are you playing in the movie? So a little bit of a spin on that. When you first sign on for this project, what quality of your character were you most looking forward to tapping into but then I also want to know something about them you found along the way that wound up being more important than you could have imagined at the start uh, I think with Cassie I love the fact that she's uh, brave enough to speak up you know like she knows what she wants mm -hmm. and even though she's dealing with loss and uh, she's a widow and it's like she's going through a rough time she's always brave enough to say what she thinks and what she wants and and I think that's that's huge in a world that needs that from us, especially from women, you know? So working with Tara, a female director, was incredible. Having such a wonderful female team behind was great too, because you feel supported. And I think Cassie knows that she has a team behind her too, like a great family behind her. So that's, I mean, those details just help so much to build her um, character and her, personality and, and I loved every second of that. I know my character is not like like Temple, for example, in the movie, which is like funny and all of that, but I think you need someone in the movie telling you, like making you think about uh, life and making you like ask yourself the question of what are you doing for this world? Are you contributing enough? And I think Cassie brings that to, to the table, yeah. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to uh, follow that up? Well, I guess I will follow that up. Um, I came to the role as a leader. You know, she's the executive producer. She runs his world um, and makes sure that he's amazing on television. But I think, and I brought that just because innately I, I feel that's within me. Yeah, and I was very appreciative to have that opportunity. And normally those are not roles that are given to me freely. So I welcome that. Tara was wonderful at, in the whole producing, to her point, uh, group of women 
who actually recognized that that was something within me. So I definitely appreciated that. I think along the way, what I really welcomed was an opportunity to be challenged as the executive producer of the show. Uh, there was a moment where I felt, you know, Ricardo wasn't able to be like number one, and I felt a type of way, like it was an indictment on my excellence. And so I took that opportunity to not one up someone, but actually just see how we can actually grow and be more substantive. And that role, I didn't expect that initially because of the way it played out. But when it happened, I welcomed it. And it ended up being wonderful more than anything. And I felt that this was a lesson that other producers in real life should learn about how to be important and purposeful and substantive. I like that one-two punch there. Thank you. Christian, Jeff, who wants to take it next? Um, well, the reason, first of all, I, I uh, decided to do this film was I was asked by Elizabeth, and we're old friends and have worked together quite a bit over the years. And uh, she told me the story, and, and then I met with, um, with Tara and... Um, Marcella and a few other people, and uh, but it wasn't so much the character for me. It was the the story, and I'll tell you why. And not in a heavy social way, but it was the, the it was the lightness of the story that had a heaviness to it. And I, I'll say, and it's only because I'm at a place in my life and my career where I've worked in all the different genres. The big films, small films, and in between, and, and uh, I'm at a place now where I'm really enjoying the simplicity of a romance, a comedy that has some weight to it, that there's, there's multiple layers to it without preaching and at the same time walking away from um, the experience as an actor, but also uh, yesterday as an audience member. And, uh, and being moved emotionally without feeling my life was changed or mm -hmm. I was assaulted with colors and sound. And, and al although all those things are wonderful, but for me, it, it's, uh, it was a pleasure and a joy to work with all these great cats and, and to be in an environment where you didn't feel you were carrying the weight of the world of a hundred million dollar or part of, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it's been beautiful and wonderful. But I think there's there's uh, this particular film, uh, the the audience can be anyone from a young child to someone in a you know who's in their last stages. Uh, but it's just it moved me in a simple, beautiful way, and uh, I was hoping that's what it was when I read it, and I was very happy to see that was the outcome. Thank you. Very well said. All right, Christian, you're last up on this one. Well, but yeah, my, my approach to, to the character was different because we created it from nothing. It was an idea and we wanted to do this. It was like, okay, let's do a movie about somebody that has everything and loses everything. And that changes. So how we do it? You know, okay, he's famous. Okay, he's in Miami. He's a TV host. And, and, and then we start creating and then why he's going to lose everything. Uh, you know, because he loses money and then he finds, so, so then w when we created Ricardo at the end of the day, we, we tried to, to create a scenario <clears throat> of, of all the things that wrongly we give the importance of happiness and how we can change that and switch that up in order for him to, to find true meaning in, in life. So, so the, there was a lot of things uh, about Ricardo that, that, that we created that, that Probably it's a way of me doing therapy also, that there's a lot of me in Ricardo, you know, how many times we, we play a character in order to avoid going deep inside ourselves because it's easier to go outside than to go inside. So many times we protect ourselves with shields and with things in order to not really show our true colors, but sometimes you have to really go deep inside yourself to shine with those true colors that at the end of the day you're hiding. So we did a lot of that. So there's a lot of therapy in my therapy in, in, in Ricardo when, you know, when, when he says a lot of things are things that I wanted to say in order for them, my daughter, to see it through a character and that will be there forever and not is something that I only tell her. 
I love that quality as someone who loves movies because I find it easier to process difficult human truths through these fictional oh, yeah. stories that I see unfolding on screen. I, I yeah. totally get behind an we, idea We like avoid that. a lot of therapy playing <laughs> characters and through that character. We love being someone else. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. And of then you really give good. that therapy to us yeah. the viewers. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a big question for you all. It is the supercut question of South by Southwest. It's a question I'm asking to everybody who comes into our interview studio. I find that Hollywood right now has like a doom and gloom mentality and I don't like it. So to shine a spotlight on the good out there, can you each name a recent movie you saw that gives you hope for the future of film and television? That's <laughs> putting you all on the spot. Yeah. Right? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna say, well, there's so many things. There's so many wonderful movies. I'm happy I'm not, to take more than one. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it's all doom and gloom. I have to support like and that. defend because we are in a world of story that is based on individual perspectives. And so everyone, no different than our switch up, yeah, people will watch it and have, and have a different takeaway. We believe overall they'll have a takeaway of do better and be good and greater in your life. Um, but our industry is flawed like any other industry, right? So I would say American fiction, just because it just has so many elements of a story that speaks to the black American community, and I'm black, if you didn't know. <laughs> and um, I felt that that really resonated with people, with Eric Alexander, Jeffrey Wright, et cetera, et cetera. But then I'd also have to say I'd like um, Griselda, because I am such a big fan of Juliet. And I'm going to take this moment in Women's History Month to just acknowledge her and tell her publicly how amazing. I've said it a thousand times privately, but I thought she just ravished the part. And just like all these women that were behind Switch Up that were amazing, Tara, Marcella, Melissa, and the whole crew, um, Juliet is a star. And I'm so grateful to have this moment with her. I've heard a lot of lovely answers to that question. That's like, that's top oh. tier. That's top tier. <laughs> I'm speechless right now. Oh my God. Um, uh, well, what can you say after that? I mean, thank you. Uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I support 100% what you just said about like cinema and all the, yeah, I mean, it has flaws, of course, but it's also so, I mean, you have so much diversity right now. And I love that, you know, like we're making this movie with people from all over the world. I mean, I'm from Colombia. You're from, where are you from? Okay. Chile. And then we have like people from the <laughs> States and then like Ruth, like people from yeah, everybody, everywhere. So it's, it's just fascinating how we're, how we want to make movies for the world. You know, and and I, I mean, I can name a, a few movies that are coming to my mind, but I think it's it's about people wanting to see every type of movies and just going out and look for them. You know, like we have streaming platforms, we have the the theaters. Of course, I love theaters, and I'm so glad they're back. You know, uh, so it's just like I, I would like to invite people just like to go and find a movie and just give that movie a chance. You know, like just like go for the experience and enjoy it and like feel it and like let let the movie ask you questions. You know, so I I am just happy and I'm so proud to be part of Switch Up because I think this movie is it's it's is that it's diverse and it's about a lot of like humanity and it's about it it has so much heart and I think that's what we want to see in movies anyway. So I, I thank South by Southwest for giving us yeah. this chance and for opening doors for so many uh, filmmakers that want to, that it, we just want to tell a story. So thank you for listening and watching what we're doing. This is why I love these festivals. <laughs> South by is at the top yeah. of that list too. Um, before I wrap up, Christian, Jeff, any particular movie or show you've seen recently? I just want to say they've said it all. <laughs> so. yeah, I'll take yeah. that, I'll take thank that. You. Yeah, same here. <laughs> after after what they said, there's nothing to yeah. be added, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is what happens when you when you kick it off with such good answers there. Yeah. <laughs> really, no better note to end this conversation on. I'm going to say thank you for your time. Thank you for giving us a little insight into the making of Switch Up, and huge congratulations on the movie. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for South supporting us. Yes, yeah. thank you, South by Southwest. Thank, thank you. you.